Good morning. Are you ready to read a book? We love our Dr. Seuss books and we've got a really good one today. Bartholomew and the Oobleck. Have you don't have you ever read this one? You're in for a treat. Like that. Already with the goo. Bartholomew and the Oobleck. They still talk about it in the kingdom of Did as the year the king got angry with the sky. And they still talk about the page boy, Bartholomew Cubbins. If it hadn't been for Bartholomew Cubbins, that king and that sky would have wrecked that little kingdom. Bartholomew had seen the king get angry many, many times before. But that year, when his majesty started growling at the sky, Bartholomew Cubbins just didn't know what to make of it. Yet all that year, the old king did it. All year long, he stared up into the air above his kingdom, muttering and sputtering through his royal whiskers, Humph! The things that come out of my sky! All spring, when the rain came down, he growled at that. All summer, when the sunshine came down, he growled at that. All autumn, when the fog came down, he growled at that. And that winter, when the snow came down, he started shouting, This snow, this fog, this sunshine, this rain, bah! these four things that come down from my sky. But King Derwin, Bartholomew tried to calm him. You've always had those same four things come down. That's just the trouble, bellowed the king. Every year, the same four things. I'm mighty tired of those old things. I want something new to come down. Something new to come down, Bartholomew gasped. That's impossible, your majesty. You just can't have it. Boy, don't you dare tell me what I can or cannot have. Remember, Bartholomew, I am king. I know, sire, said Bartholomew. You rule all the land, and you rule all the people, but even kings can't rule the sky. can't, huh? His majesty flew into a terrible rage. Well, maybe their kings can't do it, but maybe I'm the one king who can. You mark my words, Bartholomew Cubbins. I will have something new come down. But how to get something new to come down? That was rather hard to think up. And for many days, the old king stomped around, trying to figure out a way to do it. Then finally, late one night, when all the lords and ladies of the palace were fast asleep, just as the king was buttoning his royal nightshirt, he suddenly stopped still. A strange wild light began to shine in his gray-green eyes. Why, of course, he began laughing. They can do it for me. Bartholomew Cubbins, blow my secret whistle, quick. Call my royal magicians. Your magicians, your majesty? Bartholomew shivered. Oh no, your majesty, don't call them. You hold your tongue, Bartholomew Cubbins. You do as I command you. Blow my secret whistle. Yes, sire, Bartholomew bowed. But your majesty, I still think that you may be very sorry. He took the king's secret whistle from its secret hook. He blew a long, low blast down the king's back secret stairway. And a moment later, he heard them coming up. 
from their musty hole beneath the dungeon, up the empty midnight tunnel to the royal bedchamber tower, came the magicians on their padded, shuffling feet. Up and right into the room they came chanting, Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff, Fista, wista, mista, cuff. We are men of groans and howls, Mystic men who eat boiled owls. Tell us what you wish, O king, our magic can do anything. I wish, spoke the king, to have you make something fall from my sky that no other kingdom has ever had before. What can you do? What will you make? Hmm. For a moment, they stood blinking, thinking, blinking their creaky eyes. Then they spoke a word, one word, Ooblek. Ooblek, asked the king, what will it look like? Won't look like rain, won't look like snow, won't look like fog, that's all we know. We just can't tell you anymore, we've never made it before. They bowed and they started toward the door. We go now to our secret cave on mystic mountain Nika Tave. There all night long we'll work for you and you'll have Ooblek when we're through. They'll do something crazy, whispered Bartholomew. Call them back, your majesty. Stop them. Stop them? Not for a ton of diamonds, chuckled the king. Why, I'll be the mightiest man that ever lived. Just think of it. Tomorrow, I'm going to have Ooblack. It took Bartholomew a long time to get the excited king to sleep that night, but there was no sleep for Bartholomew the page boy. All night long, he stood in the king's window, staring out at the mystic mountain Nikotave. Somewhere up there, Bartholomew knew the magicians were working their terrible magic. All night the magicians did. All night they walked circles round their magic fire, making magic mumbling with their clucking tongues. Oh, snow and rain are not not enough, but we must make some brand new stuff. So feed the fire with wet mouse hair. Burn an onion, burn a chair. Burn a whisker from your chin and burn a long sour lizard skin. Burn yellow twigs and burn red rust and burn a stocking full of dust. Make magic smoke green, thick, and hot. It sure smells dreadful, does it not? That means the smoke is now just right, so quick, before the day gets light. Go, magic smoke, go high, go high. Go rise into the kingdom sky. Go make the oobleck tumble down on every street in every town. Go make the wondrous Ooblek fall. Oh, bring down Ooblek on us all. Hmm, what do you think? <laughs> Dawn was just breaking and Bartholomew was still standing, trembling, watching at the bedchamber window. But now as the sun rose, Bartholomew smiled. Those silly magicians hadn't done a thing. Then suddenly, Bartholomew come and stop smiling. Was he seeing things? No, there was something strange up there in the sky. At first, it seemed like a little greenish cloud, just a wisp of greenish straight steam. But now it was coming lower, closer, down towards the fields and farms and houses of the sleeping little kingdom. It was swirling around the topmost turrets of the palace. Tiny little greenish specks were shimmering in the air right over his head. Queer little greenish blobs just about the size of grape seeds. He stretched out his hands. He started to catch one. Then he pulled his hand back. There was something frightening about those blobs. Bartholomew slammed the window shut. Wake up, your majesty, he shouted. Your oobleck, it's falling. You see all the green?
The king sprang out of his royal bedsheets. By my royal whiskers it is, he cried. Oh, that beautiful oobleck, and it's mine, all mine. I don't like the looks of those blobs, sire, said Bartholomew. They're coming down now as big as greenish peanuts. The bigger the better, laughed the king. Oh, what a day. I'm going to make it a holiday. I want every man, woman, and child in my kingdom to go out and dance in my glorious oobleck. Out in that stuff? asked Bartholomew. Do you really think it's safe, sire? Stop asking foolish questions, snapped the king. Boy, you run to my royal bell tower. Wake my royal bell ringer. Tell him to ring the great holiday bell. For a moment, Bartholomew Cubbins didn't move. Run, barked the king. Bartholomew ran. Across the sleeping palace, Bartholomew ran. Then up the ladder of the high bell tower, he climbed to the bell ringer's little cubby hole in the belfry. Ring your bell, he called. His majesty the king proclaims today a holiday. The old man crawled out of his cot. He grabbed the bell rope. What's the holiday for, Bartholomew? You'll find out soon enough, said Bartholomew. The bell ringer yanked the rope. Nothing happened. He yanked it harder. Still nothing happened. Huh? What's wrong with my bell, he murmured. I'd better take a look outside. He poked his head out through the little trap door. <gasps> Merciful gracious, he gulped. What is that? All over my bell like greenish molasses. Not only your bell, Bartholomew cried. Look at that poor robin down there in that tree. She's stuck to her nest. She can't move a wing. That oobleck's gooey. It's gummy. It's like glue. Ooh, the bell ringer wrung his hands. If that green stuff sticks up robins, it'll stick up people too. Someone's got to warm the people, cried Bartholomew. Got to wake them up and warn them to stay inside their houses. I'll tell the royal trumpeter, he shouted. And he turned and slid like lightning down the bell tower ladder. Run, Bartholomew. Run. To the trumpeter's tower raced Bartholomew Cubbins, and up on the steps four stairs at a time. As he ran, he could hear the plop, plop of the oobleck on the window panes. It was pelting against the palace walls as big as greenish cupcakes now. He yanked the covers off the snoring trumpeter. He shoved his cold trumpet right into his sleepy hands. Get up! Warn the people! Blow the alarm! Alarm? yawned the trumpeter. Then his eyes saw the oobleck. Those green things, Bartholomew, where'd they come from? The king, panted Bartholomew. His royal magicians made them. The royal trumpeter leapt from his bed. That king of ours should be ashamed. He jabbed his trumpet out of the window. I'll blow, he shouted, the loudest alarm that's ever been heard in the kingdom of Did. Ah! But all the trumpeter blew was a glug. My horn, he gulped. One of those green things flew inside it. He tried to blow it out. He couldn't blow it out. He tried to shake it out. He couldn't shake it out. I'll get it somehow, he yelled. I'll pull it out. No, shouted Bartholomew, don't you touch it. The trumpeter's hand was already in it. His fingers grabbed hold of the lump of oobleck. He could feel it squiggle around in his fist like a slippery potato dumpling made of rubber. He pulled with all his might. The oobleck began to stretch, then gloing. The oobleck snapped back inside the trumpet. It yanked his arm back with it right up to the elbow. I can't wiggle a finger, the trumpeter wailed. Oh, Bartholomew, what'll I do? I don't know, and I have to leave you stuck to your horn. But if you can't warn people of the kingdom, I've got to find someone who can. Out of the room and down the stairs raced Bartholomew Cubbins. 
down to the chamber of the captain of the guards. The captain was humming in front of his mirror, combing the ends of his handsome mustache. Captain, do something, shouted Bartholomew. Do something? Why? smiled the captain. What's wrong? Captain, haven't you seen the dreadful oobleck? It's coming down now as big as greenish baseballs. Oh, that stuff, laughed the captain. What's so dreadful about that, lad? You know, I think it's rather pretty. Captain, pleaded Bartholomew, it's dangerous. Nonsense, snorted the captain. Lad, you're trying to frighten me? Captains, my boy, are afraid of nothing. That stuff's harmless. I'll show you. I'll eat some. Eat some? gasped Bartholomew. Oh, no! But before Bartholomew could stop him, the captain was leaning out of his window, scooping up some oobleck on the end of his sword. Don't, captain, don't! The captain did! By the time Bartholomew dragged him back inside the room, his mouth was glued tight shut with oobleck. He tried to speak, but no words came out. All the noble captain of the guards could do was blow a lot of little sticky greenish bubbles. Forgive me for leaving you, Captain, said Bartholomew, but a captain full of bubbles is no help at all. Bartholomew stretched the poor man out and left him there on his chamber floor. Bartholomew was tearing through the zigzag palace hallways. I'll get the king's horse. I'll ride through the country. I'll warn people of the kingdom myself. He pushed open the door that led out to the royal stables. Ah! Bartholomew stopped. He could go no farther. The awful oobleck was plumping down as big as greenish footballs now. Too late to warn the people of the kingdom. There were farmers in the fields getting stuck to hoes and plows. Goats were getting stuck to ducks. Geese were getting stuck to cows. Outside the palace, it was piling up great greenish tons of oobleck deeper and deeper on every roof in the land. There was nothing Bartholomew Cubbins could do out there. Shaking his head sadly, he stepped back inside. But inside, a moment later, it was just as bad as out. With an angry roar, the oobleck was suddenly hitting the palace harder. It was battering and spattering against the walls as big as greenish buckets full of gooey asparagus soup. Like a sinking sailboat, the whole palace was springing leaks. The oobleck was ripping the windows right off of their hinges. It was dripping through the ceilings. It was rolling down the chimneys. It was coming in everywhere, even the keyholes. From every bedroom in the palace came the howls of lords and ladies. Frightened in their nightgowns, they came jumping to their doors. Go back to your beds, get under your blankets. Bartholomew Cubbins went crying through the halls. But nobody paid the slightest attention. Everyone in the palace started rushing madly about. The royal cook rushed down to the royal kitchen. Bartholomew Cubbins saw him trapped there stuck to three stew pots, a teacup, and a cat. The royal laundress rushed outside to save her laundry. Bartholomew saw her stuck tight to the clothesline between two wooden stockings, two woolen stockings, and the king's best Sunday blouse. He saw the royal fiddlers. They were stuck to their royal fiddles. Everywhere Bartholomew ran, he saw someone stuck to something. They were stuck up by the dozens. Every last friend he had in the world was flopping and floundering, all hopelessly caught in the goo. Then suddenly, midst the hubbub, Bartholomew gasped, the king, where was the king? He'd forgotten all about him. It was in the throne room that Bartholomew found him. There he sat, old King Derwin, proud and mighty ruler of the kingdom of Did, trembling, shaking, helpless as a baby. 
His royal crown was stuck to his royal head. The seat of his royal pants were stuck to the seat of his royal throne. Ublek was dripping from his royal eyebrows. It was oozing into his royal ears. Fetch my magicians, Bartholomew, he commanded. Make them say some magic words. Make them stop the Ublek falling. Bartholomew shrugged his shoulders. I can't fetch them, your majesty. Their cave on Mount Nika Cave is buried deep in Ublek. Then I must think of some magic words, groaned the king. Oh, what are those words my magicians say? Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff. That's all I can remember, and they don't do any good. The Ublek keeps on falling harder. Bartholomew T Cubbins could hold his tongue no longer. And it's going to keep on falling, he shouted, until your whole great marble palace tumbles down. So don't waste your time saying foolish magic words. You ought to be saying some plain, simple words. Simple words? What do you mean, boy? I mean, said Bartholomew, this is all your fault. Now the least you can do is say the simple words, I'm sorry. No one had ever talked to the king like this before. What, he bellowed, me, me say I'm sorry? Kings never say I'm sorry. And I am the mightiest king in all the world. Bartholomew looked the king square in the eye. You may be a mighty king, he said, but you're sitting in Ublek up to your chin. And so is everyone else in your land. And if you won't even say you're sorry, you're no sort of a king at all. Bartholomew Cubbins turned his back. He started for the throne room door. But then Bartholomew heard a great deep sob. The old king was crying. Come back, Bartholomew Cubbins, you're right. It is all my fault and I am sorry. Oh, Bartholomew, I'm awfully, awfully sorry. And the moment the king spoke those words, something happened. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, I'm sorry. Maybe there was something magic in those simple words, it's all my fault. Maybe there was, and maybe there wasn't. But they say that as soon as the old king spoke them, the sun began to shine and fight its way through the storm. They say that the falling oobleck blobs grew smaller and smaller and smaller. They say that all the Ublek that was stuck on all the people and on all the animals of the kingdom of Did just simply, quietly melted away. And then they say, Bartholomew took the old king by the sleeve. Oh no, <laughs> then what happened? And then they say Bartholomew took the old king by the sleeve and led him up the steps of the high bell tower. He put the bell rope into his majesty's hands and the king himself rang the holiday bell. Then the king proclaimed a brand new national holiday in order of the four perfect things that come down from the sky. The king now knew that these four old fashioned things the rain, the sunshine, the fog, and the snow were good enough for any king in all the world, especially for him, old King Darwin of Did. Oh. Bartholomew and the Ublek. This is a fascinating story. Have you ever seen Ublek fall from the sky? I haven't. But I bet that if it did, It'd be some rich old king who didn't have anything better to do on his time than make Ublek fall from the sky. Why did the king want Ublek? Well, if you remember, he wanted something that no other king had ever seen. Again, he wanted to make himself great. And we always know that when we try and make ourselves great, nothing good happens. Well, the Ublek got into everything. 
and the king finally realized that he had made a huge mistake. And Bartholomew presented it with an option. He said, please, king, say you're sorry and all this will end. Didn't the king listen to him? No. And the oobleck kept falling from the sky, falling and falling and falling, messing everything up. Finally, the king, in a very wise thing, said two very important words. I'm sorry. These are two of the most powerful words that we have in the human language. Because in our lives, we sometimes do the wrong thing. It's going to happen no matter who you are. Sometimes you're going to not do what you should have done. Or sometimes you're going to do something that hurts someone else, even by accident. And when that happens, you have a choice. You can either walk away and pretend that nothing happened, or pretend that you're perfect. Or you can look at yourself honestly, the way that God does, and you can say, I'm sorry. All of a sudden, you know what that does? It makes all that hurt disappear. And all that hurt goes away, just like the oobleck started to just dry up and go away and float away into the air. So what is the oobleck in your life? What are the things that you need to say you're sorry for? It can be a wonderful exercise to do. And it, doesn't, it shouldn't make you feel bad about yourself because it is one of the most powerful things that you can do as a person is to say you're sorry. It's a wonderful thing to do. Why don't you try it with me? Repeat after me. I'm sorry. Very good. All right. It's a great thing to say to other people when you've hurt them or maybe if you're unsure if you've hurt them, right? Because they will appreciate it and they will know that you are looking out for them more than yourself. Thank you. Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm sure you recognize that little tune I just played. That's right, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Those are the words we all know really well, that one verse followed by that chorus. So what I thought I would do today, we would work on a new verse to put together with that one we know real well. What do you say? I will sing through a new little bit, and then I'll point to you at home to sing it back to me. And we'll do a little back and forth. Once we finish that, we'll sing through all of verse one, and then all this new verse together with the piano. All right? Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, this I know. As he loved so long ago. As he loved so long ago. Taking children on his knee. Taking children on his knee. Saying, let them come to me. And then we jump right back into that chorus. Well done. All right, so now with the piano, we'll do both verses, the one we really, really know well, and then this new one we just worked on together. Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know. Yes, Jesus. 